morning twin what's up what's up what's up another day another dollar please don't kick the dog make him holler <laughs> In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always welcome to another edition of what I call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper of the host of this program, known here on social media, wherever you may find me, I am known as the Mighty, Mighty. My dad, Angel Snuffin' Up 7, I am your soul brother, number one. Yeah, unfortunately, we got to have that dollar twin. I'm very sure that we could create a society, create a culture, where we don't have to worry about currency, we don't have to worry about a dollar. We can live in a manner where we can actually enjoy our lives. Instead, instead of getting up, going to work, and do what we do every day like this is normal. This, this is an unnatural life. This is unnatural. There is nowhere in nature where you find animals that work for the benefit of others. It's very rare. And if you do, it's because they're being tricked by the other animal. And you will see cases of that in nature. I was told that the lioness, they catch food and the male lion does nothing. That's her family. The male lion is her family. That's how they operate. The female lions catch the food and the big male lions will protect them from these uh, troublemakers. That's her family. If I go out and work and my wife don't work, but she's at home taking care of the children, I'm working for the benefit of our family. I'm talking about you working for the benefit of your enemy. You a chicken laying eggs so the fox can eat your eggs. That's the relationship I'm talking about. We out here working for people who don't give a damn about us. That's what I'm talking about. Making them rich and giving you pennies. Exploitation. And exploitation in a capitalist system it's normal. And even when you hear these pro blackity black folks talk, they talk in capitalism the same stuff. And if you ever work for them, they doing it, they look at things the same way as the racists do. So like I keep telling us, when you enter religion, and you a Christian, and then you convert yourself to Islam, the only thing that you done was go from one plantation to, the, to another. When you think that you have 
reached a new level of consciousness and now you all pro blackity black 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 stuff the only thing you've done was go from a white slave master to a black one so what's the difference the black man want to make a slave out of you and the white man want to make a slave out of you you still a, a loser but you feel better because now you got a Negro slave master. Wow, I do not want a slave master, regardless of color. I want to talk about real quick these nasty comments about Gail King. Like I said before, I'm not defending Gail King. I don't defend Oprah. They have lawyers. They have publicists. They, they have a lot of money that can do that for them. I want to talk to us and our behavior. That's what I want to talk about. Look. Some of you are very proud you have a PhD, you got a DDS, HPD, <laughs> all these DD doctors, professor. You brag about the degrees and the certificates that you have on your wall. Wonderful. That's a wonderful thing. The only thing I have is a high school diploma. I'm sorry. That's all I got. I can't brag like that. And I want to applaud you for your accomplishments. Please stand up. Give yourself an applause. Look, I don't have a uh, I don't have a college degree. Matter of fact, I'm sort of like a college dropout. I know how hard and difficult the hard work that you put in to get that doctor degree. You're a lawyer, you're a scientist, an engineer, whatever you are. So I'm not making mockery and I cannot make mockery that you chose to get higher education. Now what I want to talk to you about is that some of you are educated like this and you are also on the bandwagon with the functional illiterates calling calling Oprah and Gail gorillas and monkeys with all your education you went to school you went to school for all these years. You have all this learning, but then you stoop to such a low level. So I question your education because if I was highly educated like that, how could you drop to such a low level? That's like a person in high school acting like a kindergartner. And if you see a person that you know is in high school and you see them acting like a, a kindergartner, you will look at them like they have a serious problem. You too old for that. That's what you would tell them. You too old for that. So I'm looking at the so-called pro-blackness community Black conscious, blackity black. I'm pro black, black first, RBG nation. With all this education, they have all this wisdom, all this high science. And the best thing they can do is call two, two elderly women 
gorillas and monkeys. That's the best they can do. That's all you got. Is it gonna change Gail and Oprah? No. They're still gonna be the same people they always been. And contrary to popular belief, there are a lot of black people that you claim that you love, that love Oprah, and they love Gail. So how does pro-blackness, how does this pro-black stuff look in the eyes of the people that you want to convert over to your ideology or your belief or take them where you think they need to go? They're not going to go with you because they see you as a fool. And then you want to turn around. Now you want to act like a child because that's what it is. You are Uncle Tom, you are Coon, you are Sambo, you are Gorilla. It's childish. You're childish. But then you want to turn around and show people how smart you are. Look at my college degree. Look at my supreme wisdom. I'm so smart. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teach. Marcus Garvey said this. You want to teach like you got some damn sense, but at the same time, you want to act like a child. How does this benefit you? That's my question. How does it benefit? You trying to degrade Gail King, you try to degrade Oprah, Oprah. Y'all call me a coon and a sellout and a traitor or whatever. How does that make you look in the eyes of other people looking at you? You're childish. And a child cannot lead lead nobody nowhere. And that's the number one reason of why you're not going nowhere because y'all childish. You think on an infantile level. I was reading a comment. Somebody called Oprah, Oprah and Gail overseers on, of the plantation and called Oprah and Gail white supremacists. That's the most dumbest thing I ever, I ever heard. I see why some of y'all hide behind a, hide an avatar. I see why some of y'all are faces because y'all mentally retarded. You don't want people to see how mental the person who is mentally retarded. Y'all are some real functional illiterates. That's stupid. What plant? If they are overseers. What plantation are they on? That makes you a slave. But you will say that you're free. Make up your damn mind, it's confusing. Now if you're still a slave, I understand why you say that. But if you're free, that's a dumbass statement. And then you're gonna call black women, soul sisters that's clearly Black women, soul sisters, you gonna call them white supremacists. They not white. The whole thing sounds dumb and stupid. And I guarantee you, a lot of these people have college degrees And they talking and acting this way. Silly, immature, childish, illiterate. They don't, they don't see what they look like. Because that pro pro-blackness blinds you. It gives you woo! Pro-blackness gives you a false sense of intelligence. I'm gonna say that again. Pro-blackness give you a false sense of intelligence. Because clearly, when you look at the actions of these persons who are supposed to be black first, and RBG Nation, 
and comedic and whatever pro-blackness they represent, you see these people aren't very smart. They don't accomplish nothing. If you accomplish something, and then you approach Gail, and you approach Oprah, maybe they might listen to you. They're not gonna listen to a child ranting and raving, calling people silly names. This is the same type of behavior that you will see on the playground, among kindergartners. Little children act this way. Little babies act this way. Why do they do that? Because they're children. Their mind, their brains are not developed. Many children are selfish. Many children are arrogant. Many children are self-righteous. That's, that's what you see in this pro-blackness stuff. The same kind of behavior. When you become an adult, your actions supposed to show that you have grown, you have a, a different way of doing things. You don't run around calling people childish names. That's what you see in the pro-blackness community. So my question to all these idiots, uh-oh, I'm calling people names. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna join you. Yeah, I'm gonna join you. I admit it, I'm acting childish. Cause I'm damn sure I'm gonna call y'all an idiots. I'm gonna speak your language that you understand. I wanna ask you idiots. Cause it's idiotic, it's silly. How does that benefit you? How does it help your condition? Calling people coons and sambos, sellouts, traitors, and all this other nonsense. How does it benefit you? You think you look tough? It make you feel tough? It make you feel different. I'm glad I'm not a sambo. I'm glad I'm not a coon. Do you produce food, clothing, and shelter for yourself? I'm asking you a question. Do you produce food, clothing, and shelter for yourself? If not, you are a coon. If not, you are a sambo. The same racist system that Oprah and Gail depend on, you depend on also. You pay the white man taxes. You work on his jobs. You eat the processed food and the organic food. Some of y'all into the veggie thing. You think that you better than somebody else because you, cause you're a vegetarian. You don't grow your own vegetables. You don't grow your own meat. You don't produce your own milk. You don't produce your own wood. Electricity, nothing. You are cool than a sambo. You depend on the same system to survive as Gail and Oprah. And some of y'all have the same physical features like Gail and Oprah. So when you call them a gorilla and a monkey, you calling yourself a gorilla and a monkey. Stupid. That's why I am so happy not to have nothing to do with that pro-black RBG nation, comedic Hebrew is more, whatever that pro-blackness is. I'm so glad to be away from all that nonsense. It's stupid. Even, even when I was part of it, I always questioned it. Because this is what they say. You catch more bees with honey. How the hell are you gonna catch 
beads with this nasty, self-righteous, arrogant, childish behavior that pro-blackness have gave you. They really think they saying something. Gail is a sellout. Gail a white supremacist, an overseer, white supremacist. All this foolish nonsense. Pro-blackness make you want to defend black men and these black men are suspected or they're guilty of being rapists and pedophile and whatever. I'm not going to defend nothing like that. So I will never be pro-black. Never. I don't give a damn if a man who is a rapist, most of these men, chances are they're guilty. And just because you didn't get charged with a crime, just because you didn't go to jail, Something about you ain't right. I don't want to be affiliated with you like that. I'm not going to be going around here defending people and then you look so stupid when it all comes out that these people are actually guilty of what they was accused of. Then y'all look stupid. Hey, what's up there, Sean? What's going on? Y'all didn't learn a damn thing. Well, some of you don't know about the Tawana Brawley case. And Tawana Brawley told a lie. She was raped by a white district attorney. And when it was all said and done, it was proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that the whole story was a lie. And Minister Farrakhan was on the bandwagon, Al Sharpton, and all these people and you don't hear them talking about that case no more. Matter of fact, please don't bring it up. They all look stupid. But that's what pro-blackness do to you. You act on emotion. Y'all emotional. You don't sit back in the cut and study and wait and see. Because, see, you have a personal agenda against the white man. See, the white man is the devil. He raping our women. See, the white man's the devil. They attacking black men. Michael Jackson, Art Kelly, Bill Cosby, and so forth and so forth. That bad old white man and Gail and Oprah helping, helping them. And you jump on that bandwagon like a fool. Russell Simmons, if he's an innocent man, why, he did, why the hell did he leave the country? And, and Russell Simmons made sure he went to a country that don't, that don't have an extradition treaty with the United States. Oh, but he's innocent. Michael Jackson said out of his mouth, and I love Michael Jackson. Anybody that know me know I love me some Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson said out of his mouth, it's all right. Get a five-year-old man to sleep with little boys. He said that. That's suspect to me. R. Kelly got a, got a sex tape. Got him urinating on a woman. All these things. And pro-blackness support that. You can kiss rocks. I'm not going to be part of that. Tawana Brawley got me. And that's the last Negro that's going to get me. Y'all can support pedophiles and rapists all you want to. And you, and you want to know something else? And the reason why some of these pro-black folks do that, because they probably guilty of some of that stuff. Because these pro-black men, the women ain't nothing but sex toys. Most of these sisters caught up in these pro-black mindsets, they probably have three or more children. They having babies, 
for their for their delusional nation that they, they have not built in a hundred years. And most of these women, hey, I'm gonna try to, Shaw. Most of these women in these pro-black stuff, they're nothing but tools. They're just something to use. And they sit around and support their useless ass men that talk about building a nation don't even have a lemonade stand. There was a sister, I think her name was Melanin Sutek. And the only thing she did was defend these brothers all day long. And she ran around on Facebook. She got big breasts. And she bragged she brag about how she has all sex with her with her man and how happy she was and all that blackity black stuff. And I think she got about five or six children. And I was just, I just sit back in the cut and I was just waiting. That pro-black brother left her and all her children. And then she started talking bad about black men. Next thing you know, you don't see her on social media no more. She might be living in a, in a homeless shelter somewhere with her five and six children because pro-blackness don't support you like that. The only thing they do is run their mouth. And like King Nova said, that's a fact. The only thing the Nation of Islam done for me gave me some pickle barrels to sleep on and gave me some burn up bean pies to eat. Out of my whole nine years messing around with the, with the Nation of Islam. That's all I got out the deal. That's all. But my question How does calling Oprah and Gayle gorillas and monkeys, how does that benefit black folks? You only, pro-blackness is only hurting yourself. Because you're looking silly and immature in the eyes of the people that you claim you want to try to help. They look at y'all as violent and nasty and vulgar, immature, a bunch of sick ass folks, and you are. You're a bunch of mental retards, functional illiterates. You don't have no supreme wisdom. You don't have no knowledge and understanding. If you did, you would express that, but you, you don't have it, that's why you can't express it. So just because you have a master's degree or you call yourself a doctor or professor don't mean you can't be an idiot because clearly these people are idiots. A bunch of wackos. They are truly insane. Pro-blackness is a sign of mental retardation. I told you that and these people prove my point all the time. Oprah and Gail do not give a damn about what you're talking about. You're silly. The only people you impress is another child. And then you have this silly guy, Snoop Dogg, Snoopy, silly man, who made his career out of calling women bitches and hoes. Disrespect a whole group of women, soul sisters, he made a career out of it. Y'all gave this people, this man money to call our women bitches and hoes 
for decades. He has the nerve. You disrespect Kobe. They called Kobe a coon last month. He's been a coon forever. They hate interracial relationships. They don't like biracial children. All of a sudden, Kobe Bryant is some kind of messiah. He's some kind of Malcolm X or something. So this, so this dope fiend, Snoopy Dog, called Gail King all out her name. And Susan Rice stepped up to the plate and called Snoopy Dog out on his bull. Keep it up. Keep it up. We got an army coming for your ass. And Snoop Dogg is a millionaire. And the reality is, he's part of the same clique. He's part of that entertainment. Same clique. He been around Oprah and Gayle and all these people. He's kissing and hugging on Martha Stewart. Snoopy Dogg got pictures with Harvey Weinstein, whatever the hell that, that dude's name is. He's a hypocrite. Susan Rice come out and tell him, you need to slow your damn roll. Got something for your ass, boy. And now he's on social media apologizing like the punk that he is. All these pro-blackness folks is punks. Stand on yours. See, Snoopy Dog got a lot to lose if things start getting heated up and he know it. He don't want to lose. He don't want to go through that drama. And he know pro-blackness don't have his back. See, these pro-black folks, all thing they do is talk. They children. What does, tell me what, what backs pro-blackness up? They don't have nothing. Everything they get come from white folks. No, I don't give a damn what pro these pro-black folks say. And then they use the white man's social media to run their mouth. Pro-blackness is a joke. Now, I grew up and I was raised in the real pro-blackness. These people, this generation here, have turned RBG, black first, pro-blackness, they done made a joke out of it. It's a place where you can be a clown. Nobody takes you serious. They don't know what the reality is. They was raised up on Malcolm X YouTube sound bites. I was raised in the real thing. That's the difference between me and them. I was raised in the real thing. And the way they act and the way they behave, I don't I, I don't get it. Even in, even in the 1980s, folks did not act the way these people do. You think trying to sound tough, trying to be bad? They've been around Farrakhan too long because he's a joke. Louis Farrakhan is a joke. They got away with killing Malcolm X and he think he's tough and can keep doing dumbass stuff. Farrakhan is a joke too. Farrakhan made a, made a veiled threat against Milton Coleman in the 80s. And then like the, then like the coward he is, he backtracked like Snoopy Dogg and tried to clean up what he said. It was very clear 
that he made a threat against that, that news that news reporter, that journalist Milton Coleman. And he backtracked. That's what these pro blackness they are not, they're cowards. That's why most of them hide behind a picture, hide behind avatars. They cowards. <laughs> What'd you say? They full of shazir. <laughs> You're right, they are. And your best bet is to stay the hell away from them. Because they make... Oh, that's all right, twin. They make soul brothers and sisters. They make, they make the community, they make us as a people look really, really bad. In their mind, they are intelligent. They have all this wisdom. But the reality is they are a true embarrassment. They bring embarrassment to the community. They are the ones that keep hate and division and all this. I guarantee you, if I had a chance to talk with Oprah or Gail, I might be able to get us something out of them. Because I don't talk that crazy stuff. How the hell our people and how the hell are you talking about we want unity and then you fall all apart because things don't go your way. Ain't nobody your damn slave. Oprah and Gail Smith, Denzel Washington, Robert John whoever, these people do because they, they are not your slaves. And just because they don't do what you talk about, they still black. They still soul brothers and sisters whether you or I like it or not. They're not your slave. They do what they feel they want to do. B, this is what I'm going to say in conclusion. Be an example of what y'all talking about. Be an example of what you're talking about. The only thing you showing is a bunch of clowns, immature, childish, you're violent, you're nasty, vulgar, liars, slanderers, gossip spreaders. That's what you are. And ain't nobody gonna get on that train. If you better than Oprah, if you better than Gail, you better than me, be an example of it. Let's see what pro-blackness really supposed to be about. But if you are an example of pro-blackness, Gail, me, the majority of, the, of brothers and sisters don't want nothing to do with it. And you only make yourself look bad. Yeah, you will convert a few, but the majority that you need, you will never get. They're not interested in your foolishness. They can do bad by themselves. They can be childish by themselves. They don't need you. You are pro-black, but you are fool. You pro-black, but you silly. I think some of y'all been drinking too much similar like milk. You wasn't breastfed and your brain not developed properly. Because Similac cannot do for you what your mother's what your mother's milk can do. So your brain ain't developed right. And then some of y'all just retarded. You believe anything somebody say you emotional. You don't like white folks. Anybody that hoop and holler, something that sound good against white folks, there you go. Go ahead, teach, brother, teach. Preach, brother, preach. Y'all, he's so dumb. Don't think worth a damn. On that train, huh, I don't never want to get on. 
So on that note, I just wanted to put that out there. Get that off my chest. Because I'm only one person. And a video can reach more people than just me. I want folks to show how silly pro-blackness is. Pro-blackness is a sign of mental retardation. They prove it all the time. And it gives them the delusion, the false sense of intelligence. But when you look at their actions, clearly their actions is not of the intelligent people. It's, it's really sad when you, it's really sad. And this pro-black mindset is very divisive. It is opposite of what they claim. Like when you look at religion, religion teaches peace and love but when you look at the, but when you look at the uh, history of religion, it's very violent. It's very nasty. It's very evil. When you really look at the history of religion, same thing with pro-blackness. They teach, they teach that pro-blackness is supposed to be about self-love and unity. But when you look at their actions and their behaviors, that's not what you see. You don't see unity. You don't see love. Because you would understand, or even according to your teachings, you would you know that we as a people are mentally ill. You don't go around calling mentally ill and sick people names. You try to help them. And if they spit on you, you got to overlook the spit. Because they sick. They don't know what they're doing. So, you will consider Gail and Oprah as being mentally sick. You got to overlook them. And you got to reach out and try to help them. But see, these people are not real doctors. They're not really... They're not really those who care about life. They are chocolate-covered racists, wannabes, and they are nothing but people who are looking for slaves for their plantation. That's all they are. They don't give a damn about you and me. They just want you on their plantation. And once they use you, they don't give a damn about you anymore. Like me. I gave the nation of Islam, I gave Farrakhan nine years of my life. That man cannot even respond to a letter that I write to him. That proves it right there. You can't even write me a letter back, sir. I gave you nine years of my life. I helped you become a millionaire. But see, once they use you, they're not interested in you no more. Like some of you brothers. Once y'all get the poo-poo, get the poo tang, y'all not interested in that woman no more. That's all you wanted. Pleasure. That's all you wanted. Or some of y'all sisters, some of y'all like the dingling ding too. And you get the brother's money. Once he don't have no more money, y'all gone. Just use folks. That's what pro-blackness do. That's what it's about. It just use you. But you're supposed to be brother and sister. I'm supposed to be your brother. Whether I, whether I believe in your religion or what you're doing or not, I'm still supposed to be your brother. But see, they are not your brother. They are not your sisters. They want you. They are the real overseers trying to get you on their pl plantation to please their white master. Because if you really do your research and break it down, you will find out that pro-blackness is really pro-whiteness. Pro-racism, pro-white. If there was no white supremacy, 
if there was no uh, white racism, pro-blackness would not even exist. Pro-blackness is the offspring and the child of white supremacy. That's why, even though they talk all this garbage, you really see they, they really don't go strong against white supremacy, if you notice. They really don't. They go more strong on Gail and Oprah than on white supremacy. They go more strong on me than white supremacy. White supremacy, they talk. But me, Gail and Oprah, they actually put a bullet in our brain. See? Because that's their father. That's their mother. They're not really going to cause their harm to their parent. Pro-blackness is a sign of mental, mental retardation. Pro-blackness is the offspring and the child of white racism. Break it down. Do your research. Get down to the root of what pro-blackness is. And you'll find that's what it is. They use the same, the same uh, dictionary that racists do. Call people coons and Uncle Toms and Sambos. They think and act the same way because they are them. You go to you go to pro blackness and you think you're fighting white supremacy, the only thing you've done was dig yourself a deeper hole in white supremacy. And like King Nova said, that's a fact. And it's a fact I gotta get out of here. I appreciate it, I want to get that rank, get that off my chest. And uh, I see why they stay away from me. I just sent uh, that brother Sonetta a letter, an email. I'm requesting to him to be a guest on his platform to talk about to talk about the Mississippi campaign. He knows who I am. I really didn't have, I really didn't have to introduce myself, but I did. He's probably not going to respond. I don't really expect him to to respond unless. For some reason, he's changed his mindset. But if he's really still into that pro-blackness mindset, I don't expect him to respond. He's not. I've sent emails to many of these pro-black folks. They don't respond. They be damned if they're going to use their platform to promote real freedom, justice, and equality. They're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. I'm not going to allow you to bring something on my platform that could really hurt my masa. What you talking about really could hurt my masa. I just want to pretend. I don't want to hurt him like that. The white man is the father of pro-black. They don't want, they're not going to hurt. They, 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 they're not, they're only going to talk about white supremacy and racism you're not going to really see them do anything to fight it nothing against it you're not going to see them do that because they are the they are the same and brothers and sisters when y'all realize that you don't leave that pro-blackness stuff alone and i hope that it's not too late you need to get on the soul train and you need to take part in the activity of what we call Operation Exodus Mississippi and really do something that can give you power and influence. That's the only way we're going to make it in this country is to gain real power. Pro-blackness gives you a delusion, a wanting But it's not going to give you nothing up. The only thing. The 
only thing that pro-blackness can do for you is play with like they do in the church. And give and sell you false hopes and dreams. And if you satisfy with that, so be it. So you should not complain because you're not getting anything because it's false dreams. You're not supposed to get you're not supposed to get anything. If you really want something, you got to work and earn it. It's not gonna fall out the sky. If you really want something, you gotta work for it. You gotta earn it. <coughs> Otherwise, you're not gonna get it. You can dream about it. <coughs> and if that's and if you if that's all you want to do, so be it. Black power family, if, if that's all that you want to do, so be it. But I don't do that here. I don't do that here. We are going to have to work. We're going to have to sacrifice. And maybe we're going to have to die in the process. Who knows? But the result is, you're going to get what you're after. Power. You're not going to get any power with pro black it wasn't designed for that. You might as well, you might as well stay in church with white Jesus. And if you look at the church and white Jesus and pro-blackness, put them both together, they have produced nothing for us. Nothing. Are you satisfied with that? I guess you are. My email and my phone should be blowing up with you saying what I need to do. Let's get this Operation Exodus Mississippi. Let's get this popping. I'm willing to sacrifice my last dime. It needs to be done. But you know, you treat me just like church also. I'm just a preacher. Glory, glory, hallelujah. You listen to Angel Snuffin' Up 7, and then you go find you go find the next preacher you want to listen to. And that's fine. That's fine with me. If you find what happened having nothing, oh well. But that's not what I'm about. I've never been about that. Never. I start seeing that when I was in the nation of Islam. I'm like, uh, ain't nothing really happening here. It's like going to church. Hell, if I wanted to go to church, I could have stayed. I could have stayed uh, in the church. But with on. On that note, let me get out of here. We do what we want to do. And by the time you get serious, it might be too late. It might be too late as I'm speaking right now. Then you're going to have to suffer the consequences of your actions. And I'm very happy to be an older person. Maybe I'll be dead and gone by the time the floor falls out of this raggedy house. And you decided not to do nothing for yourself. And you are the most vulnerable group in this country. So you're going to be easy prey for the other people trying to survive. Whatever little you got other people who who are, who are united, they can easily come and take anything that you got and throw you in a damn mass grave. That's going to be your future. You are so comfortable and you think that the way we live right now, you think that's the way it's going to be forever. 
and some of y'all study history, things change and they don't always change for the better, they change for the worse. It's, it's, it's due time for America to have a major drop. If America have a major drop and there's no there's little water available, you will see the real people come because see, it's about survival. Do you think the white man gonna put you on his list to give you some water? Do you? It only take a, it only take a major, and that's a natural disaster. When it comes to survival, people change. When it comes to survival, even your own relatives might turn on you. Cause I got a drink. I gotta look out for my own personal family. I know you my cousin and everything, but I gotta take care of my own. That's how it is in survival. So enjoy YouTube, enjoy Facebook, enjoy the good times while it lasts. I hope I'm dead and gone. Because I know, I know things change. I know things change. I was out in the community working, trying to make a living, doing my thing. Next thing you know, I'm in a crazy house. A 1,000% change. I never thought in my wildest dreams I would end up in the crazy house, but it happened. It happened. You think that you're gonna keep living and doing what you do forever. It could change overnight. Something in the world could happen. And our reality as we know it, change overnight forever. And you, and we as a group, we as a people, we're not ready, because we caught up in pro-blackness delusions, and fantasy, and church, and spirituality delusions. Giving you a false sense of security. You got to look out not only for yourself, but for your children. Apparently you don't give a damn about them as long as you can make it. I care about the children. I don't have any personal, I don't have any biological children. But I do care about the future generation. They deserve better. As an adult, I have a responsibility to help them live better and do better like somebody helped me. The reason why I can talk and do what I do is because my ancestors prior to myself did what they done. And we, this generation, you don't wanna do a damn thing. I would hope if our people survive that this generation, if they survive, I hope they wipe us out of their history books. You are not worthy of being remembered. You are an ancestor. You are an ancestor full of trash. You're not worth remembering. Tear up every damn picture, everything you ever wrote, every song you ever sung, destroy. You're not worthy because you put them in a position they did not have to be in because you were selfish. And you are an idiot. Hey, what's up there, silly of me? Everything is a game. Everything is a joke. You don't want to take, you don't take nothing serious. So if the future generations ever see this video, please do yourself a favor. This generation, erase them out your history. They are not worthy we are not worthy of remembering. Take our pictures down. 
start all over, start all over from scratch. Let these people go out of existence. They don't deserve to be remembered. They done nothing to deserve to be remembered. Skip this generation and hold on to the to brothers and sisters like during the 60s and prior or whatever. But this generation don't give a damn about you. So why should you give a damn about them? Wipe them out, out your history. Start all, start all over from scratch. They allowed you to suffer. They allowed you to go through the hell that you had to go through. They enjoy Michael Jordan's shoes and playing on Facebook and all the wonderful, beautiful things we do every day. And they didn't give a damn about future generations. If this video, if these videos are able to survive, you will learn about the Mississippi campaign and you will learn that these people had an opportunity to help make your future better and they sold you out for a few pieces of silver. They are not, they are not worth remembering. Hey, what's up there, Brother Scott? On that note, again, man, I thought this, this was supposed to be a 20 minute video. <laughs> Once again, let me get out of here. And uh, I got I got some business I got to take care of here, and uh, if everything go right, I might be able to talk to us again. But uh, life life is not guaranteed to nobody. I could be dead within the next few seconds. Who knows? But I want to tell you, while I can, I truly enjoy making these videos. I truly enjoy that you will come here and listen. I truly believe, I don't believe, I know that what I'm bringing to us is good for us. It's what's best for us. I know this. If we would only act and take things serious, we could get a lot of things done. And once you get these things done, you will be so proud of yourself. You'll be slapping yourself in the face. You will like, you will be like, damn. Could have done this a long time ago. Hey, brother John Henry, what is what is happening? Black supremacy. See, all our black supremacy people ain't stupid. Brother John is a good brother. Brother John is a very good brother. It's a lot. It's a lot of pro-blackness folks. So don't you know? Please uh take this into the content that I want to put in there. All pro-black folks ain't stupid. I saw some brothers and sisters that did not agree with all this, all this childish nonsense. That's right, brother. Black supremacy in the right and correct manner. See? So on that note, let me get out of here. I got some business to take care of. Peace to everybody. And uh, i catch y'all on the flip. I wish us love, peace, and soul.